Right, so I've had fun and games this morning, deciding how I wanted to start this video. I've begun it, I've rewritten bits of it, I've started again, because it just doesn't seem to be word strong enough to describe, to convey just how badly Labour failed the country yesterday. As the fatal motion brought by Green Party peer Jenny Jones to stop the Tories from taking a wrecking ball to our democracy, frankly, to what passes for parliamentary scrutiny, certainly, of the bills they're trying to get passed into law, fell. It has failed. Now, defenders of Starmer's Labour, who sat on their hands and allowed it to fail, will claim, as many did during the debate, many of the Tory peers, saying the need to push through the right to give the police indiscriminate powers to deal with even whatever they deem to be more than minor issues, vague and open to interpretation as that wording is, is all about stopping the likes of Just Stop Oil or Extinction Rebellion. What the Tories have done, just to recap, is to take a part of their public order bill, which of course ended up becoming law recently. They took a part of that was stripped out, however, by the Lords before it became law. And this bit pertains to what was more than minor as far as protest was concerned or uh, public disorder, because it was too open to interpretation, wasn't good enough, it wasn't specific enough. And instead of trying to tidy it up, clean it up, make it more specific and get it passed again by primary legislation where it can be again properly scrutinised, what the Tories have done is use secondary legislation instead, which is meant for minor tweaks, not stuff the Lords has literally just thrown out in an unprecedented effort to avoid scrutiny of it and avoid having to change it to, to avoid the scrutiny. Secondary legislation does not get debated, you see. Therefore, by passing it this way, it just gets ran through into law, even though the Lords shut it down when it was presented last time. Now, the fatal motion by Jenny Jones to stop that was brought to literally preserve democratic process. And instead of standing up for that, Keir Starmer whipped his lords a three line whip to pass a motion of regret, which equates to a hand wringing complaint, essentially not worth the paper it is printed on. And they were also whipped to abstain on this Green Party fatal motion. Starmer literally demanded his lords allow the Tories' power grab to pass. Vernon Coker, formerly a pathetic Labour MP, now an equally pathetic Labour Lord, made one of the most gutless speeches attempting to justify enabling the Tories that I have ever heard in my life. He said, we will abstain on the fatal motion. We will not block this legislation. So let me be clear to those who keep asking me whether the official Labour position, His Majesty's opposition's position, is to block the bill. We will not do that. I understand why some people would wish that to be otherwise, but as His Majesty's opposition, we will respect convention. We will respect tradition. We will respect the right way of doing politics in our country. And I don't believe that it necessarily shows any respect for the way democracy votes by voting down the opinion of the elected government of the day. The way to change that is, in my view, at the next election to get rid of this government and put another government in its place. That is the way forward. Well, if you're as weak as this in opposition, what use will you be in government then? Vernon Coker is all the political astuteness of a dead light bulb. And to say Starmer's Labour's position here is one of respecting tradition and convention is scraping the bottom of the barrel. Uh, but actually saying it scrapes the bottom of the barrel doesn't quite do it justice because this is actually scraping the bottom of the barrel, going straight through and discovering the barrel has a very large basement. And that's where they found this pathetic excuse. So let's shred it. The position of the opposition to the government is to hold it to account. On that, Labour failed utterly by choosing to abstain, by choosing not to vote at all, but instead to sit on their hands. Their reasoning is to respect convention when the Tories are not. Yet by abstaining, you have permitted them to not respect convention and have now set a precedent for both them to carry on shoving through anything else the Lords may block, as well as setting a precedent for yourselves that as long as Keir Starmer leads Labour, you won't stop them doing it either, enabling them to do so time and again, actually emboldening them to keep doing so. Why bother with any primary legislation anymore when they can just do this each and every time and you won't stop them all because it isn't conventional, because it isn't traditional? Tradition and convention be damned when you've just let the Tories turn the UK into a police state, when you stood by and let democracy literally die because the Tories can no longer, can, can now ram through anything, literally anything they want to now. You weak ass, flaming idiots. The messaging was just as bad from the Commons as Shadow Attorney General Emily Thornbury had also attempted to justify Labour's position by saying Labour doesn't vote in the Lords to kill a bill, 
That's the Commons' job. The constitutional position is the unelected House of Lords is a revising chamber only. If a precedent was set, the Tories could easily use their majority in the Lords to do the same to Labour laws. The Shadow Attorney General, folks, who doesn't apparently know the difference between primary and secondary legislation because this wasn't a bill. And it's also not true that the Lords are strictly a revising chamber when they can strip out legislation as they originally did with this. That the bulk of the argument about Lord's reforms, unelected peers helping make laws or break them, not just to tinker with them. We have an opposition that doesn't believe in opposing the government because, newsflash people, people voted for them. Well, not everybody did. Some voted Labour, but they didn't vote Labour to watch them sit idly by and let the Tories screw the system either. Now, I tried to find some rational explanation for all of this. I thought, well, Starmer is an authoritarian. Uh, he's a nightmare in the making, frankly. God help us if he ever reaches power. But frankly, since he doesn't believe in opposing, God help us now. But I thought to myself, perhaps he quite likes the idea of this precedent being set. Perhaps he wants to take advantage of it himself, should he become prime minister. He has confessed to being a Tory himself now, after all. Why would he not? That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Then I thought, well, this has been brought forward by the Green Party, supported by the Lib Dem Lords, supported by various crossbench peers, supported by 10 Labour Lords, actually, who defied party whip and fair play to them for showing courage and conviction unlike their quizzling colleagues like coker perhaps that's it perhaps his majesty's opposition is more opposed to other opposition parties than the sitting government the greens made inroads in various local election council seats labor might have expected to pick up they've sided with the tories to form local administrations freezing greens out the most widely reported example of that being up on the Wirral. i think right now of all the times all the starmer videos i've made the content others have put on social media is saying similarly. And the people coming out of the woodwork and calling us Tory enablers for daring to criticise Team Keith. But here they, the Labour Party of Keir Starmer, have just enabled the Tories to bury democracy in a deep, dark hole, giving them the nod to essentially keep going and doing it again, hiding behind tradition and convention to not ever stop them. This is what all of us can point to now when we say we won't back Labour when we get told we won't back Labour because we're Tories, we actually won't back Labour because they are bloody Tories. So what have we lost here? What can the Tories now do? Well, the police now have the power to arrest protesters for doing anything they consider to be more than minor, without minor and more than minor actually being well described. The police can literally stop anything they feel like now. They're, they're, the entire thing is open to their own interpretation. Where the likes of Just Stop Oil might have stopped gluing themselves to stuff or locking on. They have, since the Public Order Bill was passed, been able to peacefully slow walk in roads, for example. That would now be an arrestable offence, despite it not having been scrutinised or passed into law in the proper way. They can be arrested now for breaking a law that hasn't even been properly legislated for. But why would they stop there? Trade union strikes can be busted now. What's the right to strike an organisers enshrined in human rights law? If they make a noise, it could lead to arrest. If someone has a placard the police deem to be too big, they could be arrested. There's no proper definition to these offences, so they are right to be abused. Now put this in perspective of another law the Tories recently passed, the Strikes Minimum Service Levels Bill, where a minimum level of staff must be kept working during industrial action, forcing some work workers to frankly cross picket lines and become scabs or face the sack. Workers chiefly in health, education and transport amongst other areas. Add this latest stunt in the Lords to that and you can see strike action actually risks being targeted disproportionately more since more legislation has been passed against that particular area. The trade unions are already onto this. The BFAWU, the Bakers Union, has seen the writing on the wall, is urging other trade unions to be prepared to break the law if the Tories attempt to effectively ban strike action. Because by doing so, if they take that course of action, as they can now find excuses to do, you're no longer a worker striking for your rights. You're now a slave without any effectual rights. And the party of the trade unions is the one that sat on its hands and let it happen. It is just the most stunningly awful letdown to ordinary working class people in the country, to unionised members. And if strike breaking begins, if action is blocked or banned from happening through various ways and means, remember it was Starmer's Labour who let it happen, who enabled the Tories. They're gormless sidekicks now as they are, and I have no doubt they'll do it again. What they did yesterday was effectively go on strike as democracy died, ushering through the means 
whereby they can stop the rest of us actually taking strike action. Keir Starmer, a man who won't be seen on a picket line, basically set one up in the House of Lords last night, just minus the placards. And as for Keir, I won't stand on picket lines. What makes you think I give a rat's ass about you, Starmer himself? What was he doing yesterday whilst all this was kicking off? He was meeting with Google, hanging out with the big business types, the big ones, the rich ones, and most powerful ones, instead of being here, taking a stand, being in opposition, denying any political representation to the working classes of this country. I feel more empowered and justified, I think, than ever before that moving to the Green Party, who spearheaded this attempt to preserve democracy, was the best political move I myself have ever made personally. They, as small as they are, are the real opposition in this country now. So if they don't grow, advance, and start to become a greater force right now, when we need an opposition, most of all, we've seen nothing yet as to how dire things look set to become in the future. No longer are the traditions and conventions of our parliamentary structure going to work. Too much has relied on honourable people behaving honourably when those with honour are actually in the dramatic minority in both houses now. We need a written constitution, we need electoral reform, and we need Lord's reform as well. We cannot, as a country, carry on like this. We're being forced backwards by two parties just taking turns in power and changing nothing except to make our lives constantly worse. Enough has to be enough now. And after you've liked, shared and subscribed to this channel, because we will, I will continue to take both sets of Tory party, led by Sunak and Starmer, to task, both equally insipid as they are now. If a channel doing that is hard to come by, we'll look no further. You found one. As my video recommendation here, check out my analysis of the Green Party local election results I alluded to before. And why now it's more important than ever that more people consider going green, as I have done. And I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers, folks.